Welcome to Cradle to Golden Years. I'm Dr. John M. Thompson, Director of the Aging and Youth Services Department. The mission of Aging and Youth Services is to improve the quality of life of children, youth, and seniors through the development and coordination of programs and advocacy that achieve self-sufficiency, sustainability, and civic engagement. Did you know that more than 20% of Americans aged 65 and older don't drive, according to an analysis of the federal government's National Household Travel Survey by AARP's Public Policy Institute? Today, we will discuss how Fulton County is pursuing local solutions to getting older non-drivers where they need to go. Later in the show, we will talk with the Fulton County's Park and Recreations Department to learn how the county is providing an adaptive learning environment during the summer through innovative technology for Fulton County youth. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Today, too many older Americans are aging in place in communities where travel by car is their only transportation option. For those who do not drive, nearly 8 million people age 65 and over, there are a few transportation alternatives and fewer safe alternatives. Most older adults depend on family and friends for rides. Transportation is one of the most important issues in the daily lives of older adults trying to maintain vitality and independence in the communities where they live. Several options are available in the metro Atlanta area for seniors. These options can vary from public transit, including that with capabilities for those with disabilities, to services that provide medical transportation to and from hospital and doctor's offices. Joining us today to talk about the various options offered throughout Fulton County is Katherine Lawler, Aging and Health Resources Manager for the Atlanta Regional Commission, and Maria Sotnikova, Mobility Manager for the Atlanta Regional Commission. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Let's start off with the conversation. I know that across America, the demand for transportation is a huge issue. Can you all give our audience today some data on the increased demand for transportation in this county? We know that transportation is a growing need for older people all across the country, but recently our region, the Atlanta region, was identified as having really significant acute needs. Uh, Maria is one of our experts at the Atlanta Regional Commission and can tell you a little bit more about uh, what we're finding with the growing needs of older people. Great, thank you. Maria? Uh, well, in general, older adults outlive their ability to drive by seven to ten years. In addition to that, in the Atlanta metro area, about 90% of seniors do not have access to public transportation. Um, therefore, alternative uh, methods of transport are very much in need. Okay, now you mentioned a very good point about uh, seniors outliving uh, their ability to drive. So what are some reasons why they outlive? So why do we have to take that key from that senior? Well, I think one of the most important issues is that it's exciting that we're living so much mm -hmm. longer. We are living longer than the older adults before us, mm -hmm. and the next generation is likely to live longer than us. It's simply that we have invested in a way of getting around that just works for a limited time. So. The car doesn't work so well for kids mm -hmm. either, right? That's true. Um, and uh, until you get your license. And then uh, most people in Atlanta actually complain about driving. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not their favorite thing to okay. do. Uh, so one could argue that maybe it's not working for lots of folks. I see. But certainly as our bodies change mm -hmm. um, and our ability to uh, do the things that we need to do to maneuver uh, well in a car, including reaction times and the changes in our hearing and vision that are just natural, that they come as we grow older, make uh, the car the, the less optimal way of getting around. Okay. Awesome. And so what are some of the alternative modes of transportation for seniors in Fulton County? Well, Fulton County is actually probably one of the best positioned in Georgia because of the range of options that it offers. Um, as a community, they have invested in options for non-drivers of all ages through the public transit system for several decades. And 
Um, while there's always improvements to be made and expansion on the horizon, um, there is a nice backbone uh, for those who can have access to public transit. But as the county, uh, Fulton County has actually been a leader in some of the innovations in transportation in our region. And most importantly, the county keeps challenging itself to do more. So the county has uh, a variety of services, including um, those you can call ahead and make an appointment for a ride if you want to go to a senior center or a doctor's appointment, which can be very critical for people. Um, so the county has been a major investor. Uh, they've also been very active in seeking additional outside funding, state and federal dollars, being aggressive about trying to bring those resources to Fulton. Um, what we count on in Atlanta and some programs that Maria helps manage is we need people to push the envelope, to bring new ideas to the table. And I think Fulton has for a long time been so acutely aware of the challenges that its older citizens face that they are always willing to come and think about new ways of, of getting around. And the 21st century is actually full of transportation innovations. We're all hearing on the news about all kinds of things that are coming along. Um, and so transportation's changing for everyone. It's uh, nice to have a partner who's ready to, to think about how those new ideas, new technologies can assist older people as well. Awesome. And so as we think about the future, could you, could you all elaborate on some of the innovative practices as we focus on transportation for seniors? Well, the Atlanta Regional Commission, uh, we do a lot of surveys of older people, mm -hmm. and we continue to find that this is the greatest unmet need, transportation. Mm -hmm. So the truth is we need more of everything. Um, but some of the innovative programs that Maria helps manage include um, harvesting the power of volunteers, thinking about voucher programs that allow people to have more flexible options. Do you want to touch on any of that, Maria? Uh, sure. Um, like Ketchin said, um, volunteer driver programs are especially of interest to us, um, particularly because national surveys have found that uh, seniors or early retirees are often the volunteer drivers performing the services. So we find that not only is it a cost-effective way of providing transportation, but it helps also build community. Awesome, awesome. And so how, and I heard it loud and clear about civic engagement and volunteerism, so how are volunteers getting involved as it pertains to transportation for our seniors? I mean, are we talking about just driving a bus load or a van load of seniors, or is it just driving one person to a center, to church, or to a doctor's appointment? How, how is it working? Well, volunteer programs in our region um, fulfill uh, all of those roles, but one of the most valuable is helping people with those one-on-one -on -one trips. Okay. So a great example is the doctor's appointment. It's so essential, obviously, to your health to be able to do not only the appointment, but we know how often we go and we have to do a follow-up appointment. Or we've had a doctor's appointment and now we need to go see a specialist. Or we have to stop by the pharmacy on the way home. Right. So volunteers can perform that really critical role of helping uh, older folks get to those appointments um, and and doing all the way through the door like we like to say so that um, not just letting them off on the curb but maybe making sure they get settled in the waiting room and being there um, to be flexible because it's uh, hard to find a doctor's office where everything runs on time um, so volunteers can um, be flexible to be able to make those trips as least inconvenient and um, you know really as easy as possible but there isn't a isn't um, a faith community that isn't uh, finding ways to help some of its older members uh, make sure they get to services, whether on Sundays or Wednesdays or all of the, the picnics in, in, in between. Um, and so for a long time, not only in Atlanta and Fulton County, but certainly across our country, those places we gather in community, including our faith communities, um, have been the places where neighbors helping neighbors are often connected. Um, so what Maria helps is fund innovations so that all that's working, all those best practices you know, about how do you schedule and recruit volunteers and make it all happen um, can be copied from one place to another. Because if somebody's doing a great job, we certainly right. just want to make more of that happen. All right, awesome. So what are your thoughts about Uber and Lyft and other types of programs similar to those two? I think all of that falls in the category of kind of this exciting time that everything is changing in transportation because everyone is looking for options and choices. Mm -hmm. So as technology comes in and the kind of innovative thinking that is reflected in many of those ride sharing programs, um, we need more and all of it. And it's making life easier for a lot of people. 
what I know Maria and I have discussed with our colleagues um, and some of our partners at Fulton is that it's so exciting that they're not just thinking about a portion of the population, they're thinking about all of us, mm -hmm. people of all ages and all abilities, so that um, innovations in technology we're seeing most recently are actually spreading to everyone, in awesome. the, like the examples you gave. Awesome. So now for our seniors here in Fulton County, how can they learn more about the various resources to access transportation? Well, there's a great website. Do you want to mention that, Maria? Yes. Um, there is a great website that ARC helped develop. It's called Simply Get There at simplygetthere.org. And it is a trip planning website mm -hmm. and trip discovery website. And it presents to users all the available transportation options based on their uh, home and their destination. Wow, awesome. And tell me that website one more time, please. Simplygetthere.org. Simplygetthere.org. Thank you so much. And so, Catherine, There's Maria, also uh, a phone number, 404-463-3333. Okay, uh, folks are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to answer any question anyone would have and awesome. certainly uh, to discuss transportation options. Great, so great. if the web is your thing or if you'd rather talk to someone on the, on the phone, both are available. Awesome. So Catherine Maria, thank you so much for your time today. I'm sure that you enlighten our audience with the rich information that you provided for them. So thanks again. Thank you. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Welcome back to Cradle to Golden Years. Again, I'm Dr. John M. Thompson, Director of Fulton County's Aging and Youth Services Department. Recently, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners adopted a resolution to work collaboratively to identify and support programs that will further Fulton County's mission while specifically targeting the needs of students and academic outcomes. One of the five identified program areas is to support out-of-school activities and local school initiatives. According to research, a student loses ground academically during the summer months. Thanks to two of the partners identified in the resolution, Parks and Recreation and Aging and Youth Services Departments, students have a unique opportunity to avoid this documented learning loss phenomena. Here's Tony Phillips, Director of Fulton County's Park and Recreation, to tell us more. Hello, this is Tony Phillips, the Director of Fulton County Parks and Recreation, and welcome to Welcome All Park, one of our premier recreation centers here in South Fulton County. We're here today as part of our summer camp program. This year we started a new pilot program that we're really excited about. It's called Scoop Pad. Just behind me over my right shoulder, you'll see that we have a number of our summer camp children who are currently working through an online program called Scoop Pad that is designed to keep them engaged academically throughout the summer. There's a lot of research that shows, and as a parent I know, that children who don't do anything during the summer tend to have what they call brain drain. What that means is they lose about 20 to 30 percent based on research of what they learned in the previous semester. So what we're trying to do is help our kids stay engaged during the summer. We don't want to put them in summer school, but we do want to make sure that they have a boost academically while they're in our summer camp program. So twice a week, for 30 minutes at a time, they go into ScoopPad, which is an individualized learning website based on common core standards. And they have a chance to refresh those math skills. They work at their own pace. They work at their own grade level. And it just keeps those little brains moving during the summer. You talk to teachers. What they'll tell you is, once school starts back in the fall, it takes about a month to get children back to where they were when they left school at the end of the spring semester. So we're just trying to make sure that we support our children and our families and our community as best we can by providing enhanced options like this. Many children in our community don't have the option to take private tutoring or other things that may be available in other places. And so we want to make sure that we do everything we can to support the children in our community with wraparound services. We're always going to make sure they have a great summer camp experience. They swim, they play, they have field trips, they do a lot of fun things. But this helps them stay connected academically and gives them a step ahead when they go back to the school in the fall. It's part of our effort to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the community here in Fulton County. Thank you, Tony. Our agency was interested in partnering with Parks and Recreation based on the information Tony just provided to you in addition to Scoop has. Adaptive Learning. 
curriculum built for Common Core focusing on math and ELA, a cloud-based adaptive learning platform. Joining me to discuss the partnership and potential outcomes of this initiative is Program Director of Aging and Youth Services, Ladisa Onilagu. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Thompson, for having me. I appreciate you being here. So if you would, and so we uh, heard Tony's piece just now, so if you can talk to us about the need for this technology. We understand that the children and the youth are uh, out of school this summer, and we understand that we want to foster a safe learning environment for them, but why is this technology so important? The technology is so important because research has proven over and over again that that out-of-school time during the summer months really causes a regression in what students have learned from the previous year and going into the next year. So this type of technology, a platform such as ScootPad and others that are out there, allow students to commit time on task mm -hmm. while they're enjoying their recreational activities. So they're able to go to camp at Welcome Mall, but still there's time dedicated to making sure that they maintain some of the learning. The, as Tony stated, that this is aligned with um, the core curriculum. So students can follow their particular track based on their next grade level, okay. continue the learning, and still go back and have fun after that. Awesome. So now are kids engaged in this learning all day, or are they doing other types of activities as well? Students will be doing other activities okay. as well. This is just a certain time dedicated throughout the week. Teachers have, have been identified okay. um, to facilitate the learning, but as you saw in the video, the students have their individual devices, mm -hmm. the headsets, and the teachers are there to kind of guide the process. But it's, an, it's a user-friendly platform where the students can navigate through the lessons that they'll be learning on that particular day. Awesome, awesome. So uh, let's go to a uh, break at this moment, and when we get right back, we'll get to other guests. Thank you so much. <music> Welcome back to Cradle to Golden Years. Joining me now is Tracy Baker, who is a school pad coordinator, and Carson Phillips, a fifth grade student. Thank you so much for being here today. So if you can, tell me a little bit about this school pad technology. Why is it so important for our children? It's important because technology is the future, and because most schools are going to uh, using one-on-one -on -one devices, and we will be using those devices next year in school, so it gives the kids an opportunity to get acclimated with using the device and it's hands-on interactive learning. Okay, so how do students access this particular technology? I mean, is it on a computer? Is it, I mean, do you give them a piece of equipment? How do they access they it? They can use an iPad, a device, or, an, or a laptop computer, or a desktop computer. Okay, so, so Carson, let, let me ask you a question. Uh, have you used the ScootPad technology yet? Yes, sir. So what are you using it for? I'm using it to learn information for about next year. Okay, great. So how's it going for you so far? Good. Okay, great. Now, have you used similar technology like this in the past? No. All right, so so awesome. So, so it sounds like it's an opportunity to build upon what you've learned in the past and not use that, lose that knowledge from the past school year, right? Okay, great. So how often are you on it every day? How, how does it work? Um... I normally go to Welcome Mall and do it for Monday and Wednesday. Okay. Okay, great. So, Tracy, uh, are you one of the facilitators in uh, providing this training and providing this particular technology to the students? Yes, I am. Actually, we see three different parks that come through Welcome Mall when they come on their swimming days. Okay. So, we rotate them in and have time on the on the device using ScootPad. So, what are they learning? Can you give us some examples of what they they're have learning? time with math, okay. reading, English language arts, and spelling. Wow, wow. So it sounds like there's an opportunity for them to learn. Is it independent type learning or are they learning as a group? It's totally personalized learning. Wow. It's individual. I can customize it to that student's learning and, learning, learning and ability level. Okay, awesome. And so is it uh, truly connected to what the students will learn for the next school year or is it just learning what they just learned in the past school year? It's, it's common core standards based. Wow. So for the summer, I've given them an opportunity to review what they've learned for next year. Okay. I, and when they're going on to the next upcoming school year, we can still have the same type of customized, personalized learning for those students. That's excellent. And so tell me this, Tracy. So after this particular school, uh, th this summer ends rather, will they have an opportunity to enhance that learning 
during the school year with this same technology by coming to the parks and recreation facility, or will they just not do anything until next school year? W what's your thoughts about that? They'll continue their learning. They, not only can they do it at the Welcome All Park Center, they can do it at home. Okay. And if they can want to, they can do it at school. So it's licensed for them to use it on any type of device, whether they're at Fulton County Parks Recreation Center or at home. And that's the great thing about the platform. Excellent. And so uh, for the students that use it at home, are there are they paying, an, is the family paying an additional fee or anything, or no. is it free of charge? The license has already been paid for, and it's paid for, let's say, until the end of August. And if we okay. start it when school starts back, we'll renew the license from August to December. How many students are we talking about using the technology this summer? Approximately 150 students so far. That's excellent. So is the department considering an expansion so that more students can take advantage of it next school year and for next summer? Do you have any idea about that? I'm not sure, but it would be great if they, if they would consider using it at all parts. Excellent, excellent. Are there any, uh, are you guys collecting any type of data? It's data. It, it gives you immediate feedback and data, and that's what great you know what's great for a teacher because I don't have to go and you know, get the data myself it's there for me it sends me updates I know how long a student spent on any activity or assignment it lets me know the mastery level per each standard and that's great great feedback. That's excellent. So it sounds like great technology and so uh, something that I'm so glad that the Aging Youth Services Department is working uh, with your agency so that we can truly make sure that we can expose the students to technology. And so I want to thank you all, Tracy, Carson, thank you all so much for being here today. I'm sure that you have enlightened our audience with this new technology and, and hopefully more students can get engaged like you, Carson. So thank you all so much. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Today we were able to highlight some of the ways Fulton County's older residents can access quality transportation. We'd also like to thank our partners at Atlanta Regional Commission for providing us with this critical information. Likewise, thanks again to our friends at Parks and Recreation for showing great new innovations that help our youth stay active throughout the summer. For more information about these programs in our department, please contact us at 404 612-9558 or email us at agingandyouth at FultonCountyGA.gov. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Cradle to Golden Years. Music